The sermon text is actually from the first and second lessons about that. And as you can see, the title of the sermon is Thank God for Rainbows. Now, I think we all need to pray for rainbows, don't we? Because it would be great if we had a rainbow. But we don't have a rainbow, so it's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to talk about other things. I want to talk about rainbows. I thought of poor Noah, who <coughs> cooped up with all of those animals on the ark. In Bible study last Monday, we talked about Noah, and we learned a little bit more about Noah and, and him and what he was all about. But now, I want to talk about the rainbow portion of this. One cynic has said that Noah isn't deserving of our pity. He should have swatted the two gnats, stepped on the two cockroaches, swatted the two flies, and then also swatted those nasty mosquitoes. Didn't they been bit by mosquito lately? They're not fun. And that kind of thing. So, he had the chances, but he didn't do it because he was following God's command. Now, there was a list that was circulated on the internet in various versions and forms, and someone had stuffed it. Everything I need to know, I learned from Noah and the ark. Among the items on that list are plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. Number two, stay fit. When you're 600 years old, someone might ask you to do something really big. Number three, don't listen to critics. Do what has to be done. Number four, speed is always an advantage. The cheetahs were on board, but so were the snails. Remember that the ark was built by amateurs and the Titanic was built by professionals. Number six one, remember that the woodpeckers inside are often bigger than the storms outside. That's an interesting one, you have to think about that one all day. And last but definitely not least, no matter how bleak it looks, there's always a rainbow on the other side of your life. And on the other side, there's always a rainbow. So I say to you this morning that we need to thank God for rainbows. Rainbows are not really, really hard to understand. Neither are they to remind us of the grace and mercy and love of God. Rainbows are remind us that God has made a covenant. God has made a promise with all of his people. That's you and me. That's the promise of what we need to hold on to this morning. Okay, years ago there was a Muppet movie. Anybody see the Muppet movie or heard of it at all or know what we're talking about? Okay, we have a cool camera top here. Great. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that, at least admitting to that. Kermit the Frog sang a song in that particular movie, which was entitled, Why Are There So Many Songs About Rainbows? And you and I know the answer to that question, don't we? The Bible tells us that Noah witnessed this rainbow after a great flood had destroyed all known life except that which was on the ark. And God made a promise to Noah that never ever again would a flood destroy the earth. And God said, quote, This is a sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all the successive generations. I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come about, and I will bring the cloud over the earth, and the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature in all flesh, and never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. End of quote. Thank God for they are a reminder of so many things. They are a reminder of your and my relationship with God. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? First of all, because rainbows often follow storms. Okay? Some sort of rain or some sort of storm issue has to happen when you see a rainbow. Noah's family had experienced the flood, the incredible flood of incredible magnitude. But now the rains were over, and the water was receding, and a rainbow appeared in the heavens. Don't you imagine what their hearts did when they saw that rainbow? Maybe they leaped with joy. And what did they think, maybe, when they saw that very first rainbow? There are people who know the relief of seeing rainbows in their lives. 
A few years ago, on the east coast of the United States, particularly North Carolina, they discovered in the, pe in the people of the Midwest have known forever, hurricanes are devastating, at least they're over with a quick way of doing it. Floods can sit around and damage for months. No wonder when trouble comes, they say, the problems came flooding in on me. Or maybe you've even heard, when it rains, it pours. In other words, they have a magnitude of problems in their lives. So have you ever been hit by a flood of problems? I know I have. Maybe you have experienced something like that too. It doesn't feel very good. It feels like there's water surrounding me all the way around, and I don't know what to do or how to get off of it in order to experience something in the floods that I'm experiencing. Sometimes you and I may feel like we have more problems than we are capable of handling. And you ask, how much more can I stand? We cry out, why me, Lord? I've talked to several of you for the last five years. I've heard that, why me? How can I stand anymore after I've had so much pile on me now? <laughs> Starts come. Water rise, but then the rains let up. The water recedes, and a rainbow appears, and we say, thank God for rainbows. We are inspired to so many songs about rainbows. First of all, because rainbows follow storms. Always remember that. The next rainbow you see, it follows some sort of storm or some sort of, of, of weather event. And it happens to you in your life as well. When things are looking really bleak, the rainbow comes in a way you never expected it to come. But it will come as long as we serve our Lord, love our Lord, and keep our Lord first in our lives. Secondly, rainbows by their very own nature symbolize hope. Hope. Whose spirit is not lifted by the side of a rainbow in the clouds? I know that when my wife and I see rainbows, we smile. We feel different inside. Maybe it's because of all the color, but maybe it signifies something. Maybe we think about the Bible event. I don't know, but we do. And we've seen some fantastic, fantastic rainbows up in Colorado, up in the Rocky Mountains, where it rains a lot. But we do see the rainbows here. Sometimes we even see a double. Have you seen a double? Those are unusually thin. And then we even saw a beginning of a triple one time. One time only. Those events give you such a good feeling inside that you have to feel the hope. The hope that you can't or miss. Maybe it's because they're so colorful. I don't know. At the great time of the night of sunlight come, you're glad to see light, and maybe there's a rainbow. Maybe there's other reasons too that you can do that you can say because the sky produces that. Through enormous, beautiful rainbows. The world is still here. The sun is still shining again. All is well in God's world. You and I experience doubts. Why am I here? Why are things happening the way they are? It doesn't make sense. Why does my family have to experience what they're experiencing? Why does somebody have to die? We go through all of them. We have our doubts. Think about poor Noah. Don't you think Noah experienced some doubt somehow, some way? Sure, they had faith in God. <laughs> if they did have faith in God, they would have spent all those years working on the wood and getting the wood for the rainbow. And it took over 170 years, I believe, for him to build that ark. And he never thought of where was the wood. How did he have so much wood? It was brought up in the Bible study last Monday night that that is enough time for the wood to be grown. And then there would be more wood to go with this ark. Now this ark is huge. If you want to see it, read the rest of that Genesis chapter and see how big this ark was that they had to build and where all the wood came from. Miracle after miracles in that story if you take time to look at it all. But the flood, but we all have those doubts when the floods of our lives happen. And now in our story, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and they saw a lot of things swept away. Can you imagine how they felt when all the people around them and everybody around them started to experience, started to be washed away by the flood? How did they feel? And they saying, what in the world have we done? It took a long time for the rains to come. They had ridicule from the people around them. They were holy, if you really want to know it. And then they didn't know how to handle all of that. But then comes the rainbow. Rainbows give us hope. 
They speak of a meaningfulness of creation, and the little fellows and the great ones are just to, are not are just to look at and not to understand. Rainbows follow loves. But most importantly, a rainbow speaks of hope. So no matter what you've experienced recently that has been devastating, that has been hurtful, that has barely made you feel numb, remember there is hope in our Lord. Remember that we have that because of what God has done in our lives. Finally, and most of all, Rainbows remind us of our covenant relationship with God. Never forget that. That's what the rainbows do. God has made a pact with us, an unbreakable contract, if you'd like to say it that way. That covenant was sealed in the life and person of Jesus Christ. Look at how the writer of 1 Peter in our text, in the second lesson this morning, puts it. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, been made alive in the spirit. And then Noah, he discussed Noah and the waters of baptism. And the waters of baptism are a reminder of the waters that engulfed the earth at the time of Noah, like a rainbow, is on the reminder of our covenant relationship with the creator of heaven and earth, our Lord and our God. Even when the waters of the flood are around us, I know because of my faith in God, I'm not going to be forgotten. You know because of your faith in God, you will never be forgotten. No matter how it feels, when the rug is pulled out from underneath you, God is still present. Now, as you know, we are still in the season of Easter, and we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And truly, what happened in those dead three days in Jerusalem more than 2,000 years ago dwarfs even what rainbows were all about that Noah saw in the sky. And yet, they are part and parcel of the very same story of God's love for all of humanity. Hope declared this mighty truth. God is not interested in punishing humanity for its sin. God is interested in saving humanity from their sins. <coughs> You and I need to hold on to that promise. Remember John 3, 17. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That has been God's intent from the beginning of time. We lose sight of that because of our experiences in life. But God's intent from the beginning of time is that he's here to help us and to save us. And that's what a rainbow in the sky means to me. I hope it means to you. Every time you see it, give thanks that God has made a promise with humanity. Every thought saying, why are there so many <laughs> songs about rainbows? Rainbows follow the storms and floods in our lives. We all know that. Rainbows speak of hope. If we came in there, to trust in the Lord, we have the hope that's given to us. And rainbows are a reminder of our covenant with God. And that means we have a future because God forgives us of our sins because he rose from the dead so that we may have eternal life. Never forget what a rainbow symbolizes. Look at rainbow differently as a result of our experience today and may God continue to love you, hug you, and minister to you and may God be happiness into your hearts in the midst of those times that you will experience in the future and if your experience has come from the past may God hug you to death so to speak so that you can feel his love instead of the experience you're going through. Hope, storms, relationship, after the battle. Amen. And now may the peace of God be trapped with all people understanding in your hearts and minds. Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.